to history class with Dr. W and our discussion of 1968. In the previous lectures, we've been talking about some of the popular culture in the country in 1968 by looking at some of the books that were published in that year. We now turn to some of the movies of 1968, which, like books, both reflect the events and the emotions and the mindset of that year, and also become a part of our memory of that year. So in this first part of the lecture, we'll talk about some of the biggest box office hits and critically acclaimed films released in 1968. One of the most critically acclaimed and successful films of 1968 was The Graduate. It starred Dustin Hoffman as Benjamin Braddock, a college graduate who had no intentions for his life at that time. His story became much more interesting when Anne Bancroft entered the picture. She played the role of the sultry and tantalizing Mrs. Robinson. One critic described Ben and his experiences uh, as the guy who loses his virginity to a family friend and his heart to her daughter. So Ben engaged in an affair with Mrs. Robinson, which ended when he fell for her daughter, Elaine. At the end of the movie, Ben ended up breaking up Elaine's marriage to another man, and the two of them got on a bus together and rode off into the distance. As the credits were rolling, their happy smiles in the back of the bus began slowly fading away, leaving the viewer to wonder what exactly the fate of this kind of star-crossed uh, couple would wind up being. The movie was heralded by critics and includes a number of famous images and quotes, such as, Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. The soundtrack of the film was also very prominent, as the music of Simon and Garfunkel swept the nation in 1968, and the famous song, Mrs. Robinson, won the 1968 Grammy Award for Record of the Year. The film seemed appropriate for the mood of the times, and particularly the kind of wandering and meandering of the baby boom generation, which didn't always seem to know what it wanted to do. One of the famous moments in the film comes when Ben is floating adrift in the swimming pool and his father is talking to him about the next big industry, plastics. Another critic of the film summed it up this way, that it was richly reflecting the anything-goes mood of the late 60s. This lushly filmed sex comedy opened a few new doors and had a popular musical score. Another genre that spawned some of the big hit films of 1968 was science fiction. This genre saw one of the real classics of that year, Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, which one writer has described this way. He said, 2001 A Space Odyssey demonstrates a darkly comic vision and a suspicion of technology, counterpointed by a determination to explore the formal limits of filmmaking and its apparatus. Kubrick's film was both a uh, filmmaking masterpiece and also a social commentary that spoke to fears and concerns about technology, artificial intelligence, and just the future of the human race and where things were going. While reviews of the film were generally positive, and it is regarded as one of the more important movies produced that year, not everyone was so impressed, as one critic s described it as somewhere between hypnotic and immensely boring. Another of the sci-fi classics of that year was Planet of the Apes, starring Charlton Heston. The film is set thousands of years in the future, when a spaceship crashes onto a strange planet and its crew encounters a race of apes. On this planet, the apes of various races and descriptions are in control of everything, and humans are perceived as worthless and essentially enslaved. For its time, the film was groundbreaking, particularly for the costumes of the apes and the very realistic um, depiction. 
There was also some mild controversy over an interspecies kiss between Charlton Heston and one of the female apes, which is seen in the picture here. Finally, the end of the film was one of the real shockers of that era. As Charlton Heston's character in the final scene discovers the Statue of Liberty half buried in the sand on the beach, a very iconic scene. This reveals, of course, that the mysterious planet that they've crashed on is the Earth thousands of years in the future. And so we realize that the human race has essentially been eliminated and that apes have taken over. So again, we have this kind of commentary on the state of humanity and uh, the future of the planet. Another genre that saw a number of groundbreaking films released in 1968 was horror. And two of the most important of those films were Rosemary's Baby and Night of the Living Dead. Rosemary's Baby was written and directed by Roman Polanski and based on a best-selling 1967 novel. The movie starred Mia Farrow as the wife of an aspiring actor, and they've just moved into a new apartment building after returning from their honeymoon. One night she had a eerie, weird dream uh, about making love to a beast, and after that night she began to feel like she had been impregnated by the beast. There were many kind of weird and spooky things happening around them, especially with the other tenants in the building. And she eventually came to realize that she was carrying the devil's baby and that the apartment was actually a sadistic cult that had helped to create the conditions for this horrific state. One writer summarizes things this way, describing the film as the adventures of an actor's wife delivered to the devil and his worshippers by her ambitious husband so that she might bear the devil's baby, which she does. Oddly enough, Rosemary doesn't kill the child, even knowing that it is the spawn of the devil. And this created the opportunity for sequels to the film, like The Omen and The Omen 2. The critic Roger Ebert wrote this excellent uh, assessment of the film, calling it a brooding macabre film filled with the sense of unthinkable danger. Strangely enough, it also has an eerie sense of humor almost until the end. It is a creepy film and a crawly film and a film filled with things that go bump in the night. It is very good, much more than just a suspense story. The brilliance of the film comes from Polanski's direction and from a series of genuinely inspired performances. The best thing that can be said about the film, I think, is that it works. Polanski has taken a most difficult situation and made it believable right up to the end. In this sense, he even outdoes him. Another revolutionary film of 1968 was George Romero's Night of the Living Dead, which is credited with spawning the so-called zombie apocalypse genre. In the film, a group of zombies apparently irradiated from a space probe that exploded in the Earth's atmosphere are terrorizing the eastern seaboard of the United States. And there are many elements of the plot that are particular to uh, one couple and family who encounter the zombies and lots of details of the storyline that I don't need to go into here. Uh, the film shot in black and white was uh, terrifying in many different ways and also was a social commentary as many of the other films that I've discussed were. As one writer described it, Night of the Living Dead resonated strongly with countercultural concerns about nuclear weapons, the American invasion, Vietnam, the anti democratic relationship, government, civil rights, and youth politics. The film was a box office smash, produced on a, a budget of just over $100,000. It grossed more than $12 million in the United States and $30 million internationally and again spawned a, a host of sequels and then other films in the same genre. The film certainly had its critics, not only for the fact that it was intensely terrifying for 
all of its viewers, particularly for younger viewers who might not have known what was in store when they went to see the movie, but also because of the way minorities and women um, were treated in the film. Uh, first of all, there were virtually no minority characters in the film, except for one, a black man named Dwayne Jones, who is one of the heroes in the film, uh, only to find himself uh, killed by a, a posse of rednecks in the aftermath of saving uh, people from the zombies themselves. And then women in the film as well are uh, treated in demeaning fashion. They're utterly helpless and screaming and wailing and calling for help and things of that nature. And obviously, as I've discussed at some length in the atmosphere of the feminist movement of the late 1960s, that didn't play over particularly well. On the whole, the film was revolutionary in the horror genre. It was far more graphic than many previous horror films had been, and it wasn't really a matter of special of effects so much as it was uh, the use of cinematic effects and, and light and darkness and camera uh, approaches and things of that nature. And so many other films uh, began to imitate that one in the sense of extracting horror. And then, of course, there is simply the blood and gore uh, aspect, which again spawned a host of uh, similar kind of films after. So these are some of the most critically acclaimed and, and biggest box office successes of 1968. In the next lecture, I'll talk about some other films of 1968, in some cases um, less uh, critically and economically successful, but equally important uh, in retrospect.